Let's start by opening up Android Studio and start a new Android Studio project. Choose Empty Activity and make a new project and we'll call it Kotlin Recycler View. Choose a package name and pick a location. Make sure the language that you select is Kotlin and also make sure that you check this box for Use Android X Artifacts. Then you can tap on Finish. So let's take a quick tour of what Android Studio provided for us. First, it created its main activity Kotlin file. You can think of an activity as a screen on Android. And the important line here is set content view r.layout.activityMain. What this is saying is the content of our main activity will be the layout resource called activity main. And so you can either command click to get to that file or go into resources, open up layout, and open up activity main. And you should be able to navigate to the XML file representing the main activity. Um, one other file that we can talk about is the build.gradle file. This is where we will be adding other libraries into our project. And finally, there's an Android manifest file, which is where we'll add permission. So the first thing I like to do whenever I create a new project is simply to run it. And so the way we can do that is either by tapping on this button for run app, or the shortcut is control R. We can run the app and you can see that all we're seeing is the main activity with the hello world text. To get started with the recycler view, let's go back to the guide from CodePath. And there's a section in the guide called using the recycler view. So we're pretty much going to follow the steps outlined here. The very first thing is we want to add the recycler view interdex library to the Gradle build file. And we could add it manually into the build Gradle file, but there's actually a way that Android Studio could do it for us. Open up the activity main, the XML file, and delete the hello world text view. And here we can actually just drag in the recycler view. You should see it as part of the common palette. Let's give us give ourselves a bit more room to work with. So if we just drag out the recycler view, you can see that Android Studio will then prompt us to say, this operation requires this library. Would you like to add it now? So if you tap on OK, Android Studio will do the work for us. So in particular, if we open up the build.gradle file, what you'll see is that Android Studio has simply added this line. So what you should do now is tap on the recycler view in the component tree and open up the attributes tab. I've noticed sometimes that Android Studio has this weird bug where it won't actually show you attributes. And if you're seeing that, then just quit Android Studio and open it again and it should show up. But basically you want to see things like the layout width, height, and ID for each component in the component tree. So for the recycler view, the first thing we'll do is give it an ID. So we'll call this RV contacts because we're going to be showing a list of contacts. And by default, the layout width and height will be the size of whatever preview phone you have. But typically, it's not good to hard code the size because then, for example, if we have a larger device like this, a tablet, then you can see that the recycler view is not filling up the whole screen, which is not great. You want this to be flush with the edges. So I'm going to just constrain each of the sides to the edge of the screen. And then we want the layout width and height to both be match constraint, which basically means fill up the entire view. So now that we have the recycler view dragged in, Let's go back into our main activity and actually start to reference it. And so the way we can make that work is just say, start typing the ID of that view, and we call it RV contacts. And just to make sure that we're able to get something working, so let's set the background color to be red. And now let's try running the app. What we expect is that the hello world text has gone away, and now we should see the recycler view with the red background show up. So we can see that indeed the red background is there and there's no more hello world text. Let's go back now to the guide. And you can see that we've done number one and three. We've added the library for recycler view and we've added it to the activity to display the items. Let's go back and do number two, which is to define a model class to use as the data source. The way we can do that is open up the directory where mainactivity.kotlin is located. And we're going to add one more file there called contact.kotlin. We'll call this contact. And Kotlin actually has a very nice construct for data classes, and it's actually called data class contact. And the idea here is that there's no business logic. This entire purpose of this class is to package up different attributes into something called a contact. And you can think of a contact like a phone address contact. So we're going to we're going to have two attributes, one which will be name, and that'll be a string, and then a second, which will be the age, and that'll be an integer. Going back into main activity, our goal here is we want to 
invent a method called create contacts. And this is how we're going to manufacture a bunch of contacts that a recycler view will, will show. So I just started typing the name and Android Studio will help us to create this method. So the return type will be a list of contact. And now the responsibility of the body of this function is to actually create a list of contacts. And the way we'll do that is say val, val contact, and that this will be a mutable list of contact. We're iterating in a for loop from 1 to 150. So we're going to be creating 150 different contacts. So the name will just be person number i, where i is the index of the for loop. And then the age will simply be the index i. And at the end, we'll, we'll return contacts. Because there's only one line in the body of the for loop, we can actually omit the curly braces. Now let's capture the return value of the create contacts method, call it contacts. And so when we get to the adapter, the adapter's job will be to take this data source, contacts, and bind it into the recycler view. Going back to the guide, now we've done the definition of the model class. The next step is create a custom row layout XML file to visualize the item. To do that, go into the resources layout directory, the same place where activity main.xml is located, and let's create a new layout file called item contact. This is going to represent one contact model. The root element can be a constraint layout. And let's remind ourselves what we're trying to build. Here's the initial version of what we're making, which will be two text views, one for the person's name and right below that, the person's age. It'll require two text views. Let's drag out two text views and zoom in to make it more clear. So this one will be the person's name and the one the other one will be the person's age. Just to make it look more realistic, let's put in some sample data. For sample data, it's generally preferable to actually use not the text attribute, which is we won't know until we get the contact model. But for previewing data, you want to use the tool namespace, which is the wrench text attribute. So let's delete text view here and put in some sample data. So that looks good. And then let's make this a bit bigger, 24 SP. And then this one similarly, let's give it some sample data of age 52. Okay, so now we need to constrain these views so the Android system will know how to display them. For the name, let's make it eight pixels from the top of the screen and also eight pixels from the left end of the screen. For the age text view, we actually want this to be relative to the name. We want it to be right below with maybe a margin of, let's say four pixels. And we want it to be also eight pixels away from the left end of the screen. So now that they're aligned. Now that we've defined the custom row layout XML file, the next step is to define the adapter and view holder, which will glue everything together. To do that, let's go back into Android Studio, open up the project view, and let's create a new file in the same directory as a contact model called contact adapter. And the contact adapter is going to extend the recycler view adapter. And the recycler view adapter is going to be parameterized by a view holder. And the view holder is a wrapper around the view, which allows the recycler view to do the actual recycling. So let's define that first. We're going to define an inner class called view holder. And this is going to extend the recycler view view holder. And the view holder takes in a parameter um, called item view. And so now that we've defined the inner class view holder, we can start referencing that here. Once you've done that, Android Studio will help you to implement these abstract methods that every adapter needs to implement. Before we start in the implementation of these methods, there are two key attributes that we need in the adapter. First, we need the context. And then second, we need a list of contact. Now we have everything we need to finish the implementation of the adapter. So let me copy over some comments that explain each of these methods. On create view holder, involves inflating a layout from XML, which is the item contact XML that we defined, and returning it inside of a view holder. The job of get item count is to return the total count of items in the list. So that's pretty straightforward. It's simply going to be the size of our list of contacts. So we'll say return contacts.size. And the nice thing about Kotlin is because this is a single line of code, we can actually just say equals contact.size. And finally, we have on bind view holder. And its job is to take the data at this position and bind the data from that contact into the view, which is held onto by the view holder. So let's start with on create view holder. And this is where we need the context. So we're going to grab a layout inflator from the context that we passed in. 
and inflate the layout file that we defined. So this is going to be item contact. And there's going to be three parameters here. The second parameter is the root view group. And this is going to be the parent, which is passed in. And finally, attached root, and we're going to pass in false. And this is going to create for us a view. And so the job is we need to return a view holder type. And so we're just going to say return view holder and then pass in the view as, as the constructor argument. And because this is a single line, we can just combine these. The next and final method is on bind view holder. Grab the contact data, which is located at this position. We're going to call this contact. And now we want to take the view holder and bind the data into it. And so to do that, I'm actually going to invent a method called bind, which is on the view holder class. And I'm going to pass in the contact. Android Studio can help us to create this method. So this is inside of our custom view holder. And the job here is we want to take the different components in our item contact XML and bind the data into it. And so we can do this by referencing the views by their ID. So the name, for example, is TV name. So we'll say item view dot TV name. And we want to set the text, for example. And the text should be the name of the person. And then similarly, we want the age. We'll say age colon, and then we'll give it the name of contact.age. Now that we're done with the implementation of the contact adapter, the last step is to bind the adapter into the recycler view. Basically what that means is we want to create a new instance of contact adapter inside of main activity. So we want to set the adapter on the recycler view. So we'll say adapter is equal to contact adapter. And this will take in two parameters, one which is a context, and second is a list of contacts, which we just defined above. And the second thing that we need is a layout manager so that the recycler view knows how to lay out the views on the screen. So we'll say layout manager, and this we can use a linear layout manager. And this takes in one parameter, which is a context. And I'm passing in this because this refers to main activity, and activities are instances of context. So let's get rid of the background color, setting it to red, and now let's run the application. So we expect now that we should see some data, and you can see that we do. But interestingly, that each row of our recycler view is taking up the whole screen. And if you go back into item contact at XML, you can see why. I'm going to zoom out a little bit. But the constraint layout has a height of match parent, which means that it's taking up the whole height of the screen. Instead, if we make this wrap content, you can see how that blue outline shrunk. And so now the height is just large enough to fit the contents inside. If we run the app again now, we should see more views in the recycler view. Right? So you can see now and we have 150 different contacts in this recycler view. So we're done now with the basic recycler view implementation. The next step is we're going to use Glide, an image loading library, in order to show images for each row in our recycler view, and we'll do some conceptual review.